Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. In this video we're going to react to five American animals versus five European animals. Which ones are going to come out on top? Now most people know that the USA or just you know North America as a whole has a lot of uh, animals and the variety is huge. You've got bears, you've got mountain lions, you've got crocodiles, alligators, you've got like all kinds of powerful animals. But here in the U in Europe, I, I think we must have, you know, like in continental Europe, you know, more so than here in the UK. Here in the UK, we don't really have much wildlife. You know, we've got foxes. I think we've got some deer, but that's pretty much it. But continental Europe, I'm sure, has way, way, way more. So who's going to come out on top here? It's going to be quite an interesting one. Although North America and Europe have an ocean between them, they both have species that are closely related to each other. Mm. This is because North America used to be connected to Asia and Europe through the Bering Land Bridge. Many different I species see. could travel across this area freely. And this is just one of the many reasons why North American animals and European animals are closely related to each other. In this video, I will be comparing animals from both of these areas and estimating which one would win in a fight. I'll be going through five species from Europe and five species from North America. And we'll start off with the European badger. Now this striking creature is native to almost all of Europe and has a very large stable population. Because of the lack of large animals in the UK, the European badger is actually the UK's largest land predator and is one of the best really? well-known British species. In the wild they wow. live an omnivorous lifestyle, both taking a liking to plant matter and small creatures. During the day badgers mostly spend their time underground in their burrows which are called sets. Although some European badgers like to spend their life on their own, most European badgers are social animals. They can live in groups of up to 20 25 members, but their social behaviour is largely dictated by the availability of food. But this striking mammal also has a North American counterpart, the American badger. Even though this species has a similar- The American badger looks a bit bigger, doesn't it? Looks a little bit appearance bigger. to the European badger. They are not closely related. The American badger is known for being a little meaner than the European badger and lives a more solitary lifestyle. They live life slightly on the more carnivorous side and predominantly feed on smaller mammals such as gophers, squirrels and prairie dogs. Because of this diet they're found in more open areas and are typically found around grasslands and prairies. To be able to get at their prey they are impressive diggers and spend most of their time looking for burrows of small animals. But even though the American badger has a very mean reputation they are slightly smaller than the European badges. Interesting. It looked bigger. At least the video that they showed, like it, the American one looked a bit more wide, a bit more girthy. As the European badger can reach a length of around a meter and weighs 17 kilograms, whereas the American badger maxes out at around 75 centimeters with a weight of 15 kilograms. So for this round, I think it's 1 0 for the European creatures. But our yeah. next creature is the Eurasian otter. Now this semi-aquatic mammal is native to large parts of Eurasia and is the most widely distributed member of the otter subfamily. These otters have webbed feet and this makes them impressive swimmers. They can mostly be found in fresh waters where they're usually seen munching on fish. Although they're mostly seen as freshwater animals, the Eurasian otter can be found on the coast where it's more than happy to try a bit of seafood. In many parts of Europe it is the top freshwater predator but in recent years it's had more competition. The American mink is invasive over large parts of Europe and in most cases directly competes with the Eurasian otter. This along with habitat loss, overfishing and hunting have led to this otter being threatened in some areas. Luckily for these otters they are much loved creatures and many people are dedicated to helping them. Unfortunately this wasn't the case for the extinct Japanese otter which was considered to be a subspecies of the Eurasian otter. But as I'm sure many of you know there is also a famous otter in North America named the North American river otter. Now this otter only lives on the North American continent but lives a very similar lifestyle to the Eurasian Asian otter. They have slightly more to choose from when it comes to food in North America. Is that salmon? I think it is salmon, isn't it? Because as well as fish, they are also known to take down large numbers of turtles and crayfish. These otters are known for being extremely playful, and juveniles can often be seen chasing each other. Although this may look like just fun, it helps them improve their skills of catching fish. Now it can be very hard to tell these two otter species apart. The North American river otter has a shorter neck and generally has a longer tail compared to its body. The Eurasian otter is the only otter in much of its range and also tends to be a little larger. They can reach a maximum length of around 1.4 meters and reach a maximum weight of around 24 kilograms. The American river otter on the other hand has a maximum length of around 1.1 meters and maxes out at around 15 kilograms. Bit of a random question but you know how evolution basically um, proposes the idea that humans are like descended from like primates and stuff like what caused humans 
to evolve into primates. And eventually, will the primates that we like see now, will they eventually evolve into like, you know, Neanderthals and humans eventually? Like what were the necessary steps? Like what made it possible? Like why did it happen? So although both these animals are very lovable, that now makes it 2-0 to Europe. But our next two species are both the Eurasian brown bear and the grizzly bear. The Eurasian brown bear is the most common subspecies of brown bear gotta go with a grizzly and it's found throughout much of eurasia they feed on a wide range of foods eating various different types of plant matter such as berries and also targeting the largest mammals and fish their size and power makes them very dangerous and it's best to keep your distance from these bears in north america an average of two people a year are killed by bears in scandinavia oh, wow. there's only been three be fatalities more. from bear attacks in the last century which makes it seem like eurasian brown bears are less aggressive unfortunately the truth is not as simple as this as many other factors affect the frequency of bear attacks. In Romania in late 2019, brown bears were responsible for killing three men in just over a month. The cause of these wow. attacks are sometimes desperation, because when we decrease the habitat of these bears, there's less food to go around, and they are forced into highly populated areas. But famously, this bear also has a North American cousin, the grizzly bear. Although grizzly bears are known for being fearsome predators, some grizzlies can be surprisingly small. On the eastern slopes of Alberta, some adult grizzlies are known to be even smaller than black bears. They vary in size from area to area mostly due down to competition and food availability honestly bears are so f they're really quick they're way quicker than you think they would be honestly like when they're charging at people it's insane how fast they move. But when it comes down to maximum sizes, the grizzly bear can grow a lot larger than the Eurasian brown bear, as the European bears max out around 2.5 meters and weigh 480 kilograms, whereas the grizzly bears can reach a height of around 2.7 meters and weigh 770 kilograms. So, don't call it a comeback! But North America has pulled one back. But our next two animals are. Man, if any of you guys have not seen The Revenant with Leonardo DiCaprio, just go on YouTube and type in Revenant bear scene for the scene where um, Leo basically tries to fight off a, uh, a big bear. It's, man, it's intense. Both the European intense. bison and the American bison. Now I've been through both of these creatures many times on this channel before, as they're not only very similar in appearance, but throughout their history, they've had a very similar story. During the early years of the 20th century, European bison were once hunted to near extinction. They were only saved because they had small captive populations, and these populations were bred and then released back into the wild. This bison is the heaviest wild land animal in Europe, and is only ever targeted by the largest of predators. In most cases, these predators were humans, wolves and bears, but the two latter species are now rare in most of their distribution. The only other living species of bison in the world is found in North America, and is definitely the more famous of the bison species. It's one of the most iconic animals of America's grasslands, but just like the European bison, it was once threatened with extinction. A combination of commercial hunting and slaughter in the 19th century, along with the introduction of bovine diseases, almost wiped out these iconic mammals. They had a population of around 60 million in the late 18th century, but the species was down to just 541 animals in 1889. Wow. Oh my God. From 60 million to 500. This is one of the most devastating wild animal slaughters in the whole of human history. But luckily today, they have made a comeback. Now, both of these giants are very similar in size, with the European bison being slightly taller at the shoulder with a height of around 2.1 meters, compared with the American bison's 2 meters. But the American bison can be a lot heavier, with a max weight of around 1,200 kilograms, compared to the wow. European bison's 920 kilograms. It's heavy as a car. Although the European bison is taller, I think the American bison wins this round, and it's 2-2 going into the last two animals. Ooh. Now there are eight subspecies of moose recognized today, some of them living in North America, and the rest living in Europe and Asia. Moose are the largest and heaviest extant species in the deer family, and truly are one of the largest land mammal species alive today. Unlike other species of deer, they tend to live a solitary lifestyle, and tend to enjoy life in thick forests, and around wetland areas. Despite their size, they are impressive swimmers and are very happy in marshes and wetlands. Their size gives them protection against most predators and even wolves and bears will only really attack juveniles and sick individuals. Predators aren't the biggest threats to moose as they have a much smaller threat to worry about. Brain worms are parasites contracted from eating snails and the larvae of these worms brain find their way worms. to the moose's brain. This causes neurological damage and has led to a worrying decline in moose numbers. Millions of dollars have been poured into helping these animals and hopefully they'll be able to bounce back in the future. But when when it comes down to size, the American subspecies tend to be a little... Man, brain worms. Ugh. 
kind of reminds me of that uh, TV show, The Last of Us. Creepy. Larger show. than the European ones, as they can reach a height of around 2.1 meters at the shoulder and weigh 700 kilograms, compared to a height at the shoulder of 2 meters and a weight of 600 kilograms. So overall, it looks like the American species have come back to win this round, and they've won the competition Whoa. overall. I know this flag doesn't include the whole of North America, and this one doesn't really represent Europe, but it was easier than putting up all the individual flags in this video. If you want me to do this style of video with any other continents, then really, really interesting video, and I'm not surprised that the uh... Uh, USA came out on top there just because you know I've seen quite a few videos talking about how much and how big some of the uh, animals in America can get particularly the bears the moose and things like that I would love to you know I'd love to see a bear a big bear you know up close but obviously that would be an extremely dangerous situation to put yourself in just because you know I've seen gorillas, you know, like silverbacks and been mind blown by how big they are. But, you know, a silverback typically weighs about 250 kilograms, maybe 300 kilograms. So like what, about 600 pounds, you know, a big bear, like a big a brown bear or a polar bear is like double that, you know, you must just be just gargantuan. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.